Every Toastmaster's journey begins with a speech, but every Toastmaster's path ends with reflection. So I'm at my first contest, and I walk up to the ghost of Frost Love Speakers, Zen. I say, Zen, I'm scared. Is there anybody here I should be worried about? Zen says, don't look. Don't look to them. right now. Don't look. The guy standing behind me is from Krakow. His name is Gabor, and I would be careful about him if I were you. I did this. <laughs> and it's weird for me that the first thought I ever had of Gabor was as competition rather than a brother. I've known him for years since, and I'm happy to say our relationship has evolved beyond fierce competitors. We're both wingmen and bros at the same time. I have to admit that this is one of the hardest speeches I've ever had to evaluate, because who enjoys saying goodbye? Gabor has been working on presentation mastery for a very long time. He has reached level 5, a level that few Toastmasters ever see, and today he's going to be doing project number 50, Reflecting on Your Path, where Gabor reflects on the skills that he's gained, the experiences that he's had, the lessons that he's learned as he has become a master of presentation. Help me please, without further ado, to welcome onto the stage a speaker, a friend, a brother of mine, Gabor Hamai, The Last Speech. <laughs> the Last Speech, Gabor Hamai. The last speech of my class. The last speech in Toastmasters. I have even checked Easy Speak, counted all the speeches, and I realized that this is my 100th speech. That Easy Speak recorded, probably that means that is the 100th speech in Toastmasters. Counting the long ones, of course. And this speech had to be here at Roslov Speakers. How so? Because as Cyril said, I live in Krakow, I spent there approximately 10 years, so why is it actually here that I give the speech? Well, because you have heard about Zen. The guy really pissed me off. <laughs> why? Because he came to Wroclaw from Islamabad, the other side of the world, and made one of the best clubs here. And I was thinking, how the hell is this possible? Not that this is the best club, or one of the best, because there are great people here, but how is it possible that we are not even better there in Krakow? So I made a huge effort to create a club, Krakow Public Speaking Club, as the best club in the world. So this club, Rosa Speakers, was the biggest inspiration for me. Gave something, a huge power, thoughts, feelings, a, really, a real sense of purpose that I was working for at Krakow Public Speaking Club. And now here is my last speech. Why? I'm going to tell you about it later. I also want to tell you what it is that I have learned, what it is that I have experienced here, what is it that I'm bringing with myself, and eventually, why is it that I'm leaving. So, of course, remembering all the great stuff that happened to me gives me huge pleasure. Because, of course, there were a lot of competitions, the ones that Cyril was talking about. There were also a lot of speeches that I had given. And the great thing that I have experienced was the help and the company of others. And this is something that is the most precious for me. I have started in the previous system, the legacy system. Do you guys even know what it is? Who knows what the legacy system is? Cyril knows. Anybody else? Mitri, of course. So it's astonishing for me that within only one and a half years, this system is really gone almost without a trace. 
But what it was for me, it is learning public speaking. It started with competent communicator, competent leader, and it led us to advanced communicator and advanced leader. So we started the, with the basics, all this fine stuff, for example, structure, what it means to have a good body language, what it is that makes you have a great vocal variety. That's something that I have learned. And then I have become also a leader. And what I thought about leadership growing up in, uh, well, middle, central slash Eastern Europe is that it's either perfect or shit. There is nothing else in between. And here in Toastmasters, I realized that there is something as good things in a speech, good things in a performance. And at first it was weird. It was weird when others got it, but when I got it, it felt good. <laughs> so I was like, finally, I found my place. I found something that people like. I find something that I can give to the world. So that was amazing. And this was a new feeling, a totally new feeling. It took time to get used to it, but by the time I did, I just didn't want to stop. So I finished competent communicator, competent leader. I wanted to go for advanced leader, advanced communicator, and I finished almost all of them instead of, apart from one, that is the advanced communicator silver. So I had approximately 100 speeches. That means that I have learned a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, that I could also use outside of Toastmasters. At one point, I felt that I have done a lot and I want to do even more. So I was looking for places, where is it that I can go, that I can even learn, learn even more about public speaking. And one thing was improvisation. When I went to improv theater, improv comedy, and then later on stand-up comedy, I learned that there is more to public speaking than I learned before because I realized that public speaking is not just a way of convincing people, not just a way of getting a better job, not just a way of earning more money, it's also an art. Art meaning that we can share a piece of our soul with others, something that is deeply important for us, where we are from, what we have experienced before, what it is our life is like. Something to connect with others, something to connect with like-minded people or not like-minded people. How to debate, how to even fight a bit. With words, hopefully. And this is something, again, that was super important for me. That those masters opened a huge gate. An amazingly huge gate of self-discovery that I'm bringing with myself, too. And as I said, people. Because before that, I was not, I wouldn't say I was an absolutely antisocial, but I was quite antisocial, and I didn't really want to go to big events, go and have a lot of friends, but those masters opened this gate for me as well that I got to know a lot of people, and I had, for example, Cyril as another brother, or a brother from another mother, as we say. <laughs> and he is from Africa, I am from Europe, I haven't seen a black guy until I was 16, and now finally I have a brother that is from Africa, and I want to visit the continent, I want to do stuff, and this is so great to have experienced it here to get to know so many people from so many different backgrounds working for one goal that is bettering themselves in public speaking and in leadership. I have also learned what it is to be a good leader. And by learning it, it doesn't unfortunately mean that I'm doing it all the time because I still have a lot of bad habits that comes from the past. But what became really, really clear for me is that 
if we want to be good leaders, we need to do the same thing we do in Toastmasters. Speak. Communicate. Because you read probably amazing books about how amazing it is to have a mission, a goal, some sort of charisma, etc. But it doesn't really mean anything if you don't communicate it. Here also in Toastmasters, I have organized a lot of events. And I guess some of you have even participated on them. And many times when I organized these events, I thought that I have to have this sort of example that I work, the others will follow and they will do their duties because that's what they have to do. I don't even have to say anything. Somebody has been in my shoes too, right? <laughs> I don't even have to say anything, but they will just do. And when it didn't happen, I was angry. Why aren't they doing it? I made it clear what I want. Now you have to do your best to do it. And this was one of many of my flaws to act like this, to be like this. When I was organizing, for example, the 10th birthday of Kafka Public Speaking Club, and I had many, many, many bad, or created many bad feelings in the group. So what I learned from this is that it's not really about the goal. It might be a cliche, but it's really about the way to get there. To sit down with people, to sit down and talk. What is it that we want? How do we want to celebrate together? How do we want to work together? How do we want to be together? And then, move ahead together. Not just one guy pulling the rest, uh-uh. No. To walk everything, or all of us, in the same direction. And if somebody doesn't want, talk about it, why? So if this direction is not good, well, which one would be the best? Why is it not good? Can we do something to make it better? And this is something that I have learned here, that this is a much better way. It takes longer at the beginning, of course, but it leads us much, much farther in the end. So again, why is it that I am leaving? Well, first of all, as Sarah said, this is an end of a past. This is what I feel that one story of my life ends and the new one begins. This is sort of a logical next step. I also feel, however, that Toastmasters, Toastmasters International is not really going, going in the best way. Because I love the legacy system, I loved it from the beginning to the end. And this is something that was, I feel, thrown away a working, really great system that was suddenly abandoned and replaced by something else. And this was, for me, a warning sign that, oh, this is something that is happening already in the world, that a lot of things that we take for granted are taken away and replaced by something else. The expansion of corporations, and this is also what I see, is that now, Toastmasters International is actually a non-profit club that serves the interests of corporations almost for free. Removing the art part from the system and keeping everything that makes it effective but soulless. So this is one of the reasons, maybe the biggest reason why I feel that now it's time to move on and somehow keep this art alive. And I'm also feeling that I'm sort of a hypocrite because I think that it's really important to stand up and say no when you feel that something is not okay. And I don't think it makes anybody toxic. I think it's necessary to do it sometimes, to communicate what is it that you don't like, what is it that you want to change. And I feel I have done it, but I feel that I don't not really that I don't have the power, but I don't feel ready to fight.
fight. It's not really my fight. So I decided to move on in the end. But it's for sure not the end, because I love public speaking. I am dedicated to public speaking, leadership, and to the people. Now I'm going to also go back to my autumn cocoon in my sodad and discover what is there, what is it, this little hidden treasure that I can use to move on with my past. So with that, I want to thank you, Ross of Speakers, to be an inspiration to me, to listen to my last speech, and to meet amazing people that you are. Kudos to you, and best luck. Thank you very much.